Hey folks and welcome back and in today's video we'll be looking into how we can connect two sensors that is this is a light sensor and this is a carbon dioxide sensor. So we will connect this using ESP32 using Home Assistant. So we will measure the carbon dioxide levels as well as the luminance into Home Assistant and do some kind of automation. So with this let's get started. To start off Let's look at the two sensors. So these are the two sensors. So this is actually the BH1750 light sensor. And then we have this is the CO2 sensor, which also has a VTOC sensor in it. So now this is an SGP30 sensor. And we are going to actually connect this using ESP32. So now I have done some wiring here. But let me show you how this particular circuit looks like later. So first thing, let's look at what we are going to do is we are going to go to ESP home. Now, if you don't have ESP home set up with you, what you'll have to do is uh, there is a particular video here. You can refer to that particular video to see how to set up ESP home. So now we will look at the configuration that we will flash onto our ESP32 board. So let's look at this here. Here I have this configuration for this uh, board right now and what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify this web server. Let me zoom in a bit. So I have this web server through which we can have a live web server actually. And then after that I'm going to add this I2C configuration. So this is uh, a configuration required for the bus so that we can use it for both these particular sensors. Then here is the SGP30 sensor configuration through which we can actually configure the CO2 as well as the TVOC sensor. And then finally we have the luminance sensor that is a BH1750 sensor. Now this is the configuration that you need. Now let's actually a little bit understand about what is this SGP30 sensor. So this SGP30 sensor consists of the CO2 sensor as well as a TVOC sensor. Now what are these two sensors? So first of all CO2 sensor is straightforward. We know that the amount of less carbon dioxide that we need. So now these are the certain uh, levels of carbon dioxide that are acceptable and certain which are not acceptable for indoor use. Now, what is TVOC? Now, TVOC are certain volatile organic compounds which are present in the air and can be harmful to human beings. Now, these compounds could include certain harmful chemicals such as benzene, formaldehyde, which probably come from cleaning agents or any other chemical liquids. Now, there is a certain percentage and parts per billion that you should not cross and these are the certain levels that we have over here. So, now we will actually look at these particular levels in our sensor over here and see how actually this thing works. So first thing here to matter uh, look at it is this SDA configuration. So we are going to have this SDA at 32 pin and the SCL at the 33 pin. Okay. And uh, this is what all that we need. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on install, click on manual download, modern format. And now this will actually build that particular image for me. It might take a little bit of time on your machine because I have already built this and now this will quickly allow me to download the build file for me. So I have downloaded this particular bin file. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Chrome browser. So this is where I'm going to connect my ESP32 board. So let me first connect this here. So I've connected my ESP32 board that I have here and I have connected this to my computer. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start flashing this. So first of all, let's click on connect and then I'm going to pair this here and then I'm going to select install and choose file and I'm going to select the binary that I downloaded. Now with this, I'm going to click on install and when after clicking on install, I'm going to press this boot button and hold it until we go into the flashing mode. So now it has gone into the erasing mode and now it's actually going to flash that particular file onto this ESP32 board. So let's give it some time and let it finish. So now this has finished flashing that particular bin file onto the ESP32, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect this and now I'm going to connect this sensor. Now to show you how exactly I have connected this, I have this particular diagram here. So now this is my ESP32. Uh, I have this IO ports that is 33 and 32 that are here and I have 3.3 volt and ground pin here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect 3.3 to this 
V in and V in for both of these sensors. So this is my light sensor and this is my SGP30 sensor that is the carbon dioxide sensor. And now this I can do a connection in parallel. So this is a parallel connection wherein I'm connecting it here and then this I'm connecting it here also. Similarly with the ground one I'm connecting to the ground also. Now there's a difference when you're connecting the SDA and the SCL pins. So now when you're connecting this, so I had configured this in my configuration here that the SDA will be 32 and the SCL will be 33, right? So when I go back here and look in this, so here this pin 33 is connected to SCL and then SCL is connected to this SCL. Similarly, we are going to have the pin 32 connected to SDA and then the SDA from this is connected to SDA of the SGP30. So this is a daisy chain connection. Just Google it, you will figure it out how the daisy chain connection works. Now this is how I'm going to actually connect my ESP32 now and then we will see the levels of carbon dioxide and VTOC as well as the luminance of this particular place right now. Now I have connected the sensors to the ESP32 board and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for it to connect to my Wi-Fi. So I figured out that this is the IP address and this is now the sensors returning information about the sensors. So now this is the dashboard. So now this is the web UI on which we are going to see the sensors information. So these are the sensors that have been connected. Now let me blow some air into the SGP30 and see how the values change. So, so if you see the carbon dioxide value has increased and the VTOC also is getting some values. So let me blow a little bit of more air. And these are the levels that are increasing. Now looking at the luminance sensor. So if I cover this now, so it reduces. If I leave it, it increases. So now this is the way you can actually connect two sensors to an ESP32 board. Now I will use this to actually monitor certain things in my home such as the carbon dioxide level, the TVOC levels as well as the luminance in the house. Now let's look at how we can connect this to Home Assistant. So let's copy this IP address and then we are going to go to settings. We're going to go to devices and now let me increase this a bit. Add integration. We're going to say ESP home and we're going to provide this particular IP address. So you need to just provide the IP address here and then the port remains the same 6053 and press submit. Now this is asking me for an encryption key. So what you will have to do is we will have to open the configuration back here and we will go to ESP home. We will go to the CO2 Lux and then we are going to copy this particular encryption key. So we're going to copy this go back to home assistant and paste this here. So now the sensor is now configured into home assistant. So let's click on finish and then let's go back to this ESP home. And in this I'm going to click on device and then I'll hit refresh. And on this I you see that those three sensors are available here. So you can see the CO2 sensor, you can see the LUX sensor as well as the TVOC sensor here. Now this is how you can add it to Home Assistant and now with this we can do some automations to some alerting based on the CO2 levels that you have in the house or in your room as well as the TVOC sensor and also do something related to the LUX sensor also. So now there is also this board called as this D1 Mini. Now this is a cheaper board, it only has a Wi-Fi connection uh, available on this and that's I think more than enough for connecting these two sensors. Now the ESP32 board cost me around 4 or 5 euros whereas this one just cost me under 2 euros. So now let's look at how you can actually do the configuration for this. It is pretty much the same as what we did here but let's walk through it. So we go to this ESP home back again. Here we will click on new device then click on continue. Let's give it a name like D1 mini and click next. And now the D1 mini comes under the ESP8266 board. So you could remove this recommended settings checkbox, click on this and then search for the D1 mini. So this is the one that we are going to use that is the Vemos D1 R2 and mini. This is the configuration we will use. Click on next. 
and that's it now what we are going to do is click on edit here and we will have to add exactly the same configurations so we will go back here so we are going to copy all of this from here go back to d1 mini and we are going to paste this here so this is the exact configuration that we have only what we need to change is these things so we're going to specify according to our diagram here we're going to specify the hda supposed to be the d4 pin so hda is going to be d4 and hcl is going to be d7 here is the pin configuration that has been done d4 and d7 that's all that you need to do in order to connect the d1 mini and this is the diagram i will provide these diagrams into the link in the description below so i have this article on which all these diagrams will be put in so you can refer to them so we saw how we can actually connect the co2 and the luminance sensor to home assistant now if you like this particular video hit the like button below as well as make sure to subscribe to this particular channel for more such videos to come till then take care and see you in my next one